Hello, I'm making a game. I've got a small amount of game development experience under my belt. In 2018, I made my first game in Unity Engine. It was a very simple and rather clunky mobile game, which combined the infinite platforming of Doodle Jump with the memory game of Simon Says. And if it sounds kind of clunky, that's because it was. But it was the first thing I made. And then later that year, I made a platformer in 48 hours for a game jam called Pogo Night, where you navigate four levels while playing as a character who's constantly stuck on a pogo stick, so just can't stop jumping. Um, and you avoid spikes and enemies and find a key to open a door and complete the level. And I'm still kind of proud of this one. It's, it's definitely the best game that I've made to date. Um, later on in the year, I made another game jam entry in 48 hours, and this time it was a survival game called The Wilds, and it was bad. Unity never really clicked for me, and since 2018, I've done essentially no game development, aside from a couple of quickly scrapped projects in Game Maker Studio 2. But I'm excited to give it another go. Here's the very first description and concept art that I doodled down for the project. Essentially, I aim to make a 2D top-down action role-playing game where you play as a cute little sword-fighting animal in a post-apocalyptic dark fantasy world, exploring, fighting, levelling up and discovering the secrets of the world alone or with a friend in local cooperative play. My goal isn't to release a commercially successful game. In fact, I'll likely release it for free, as I want as many people to play it as possible. What I aim to do is learn a lot, and release a fairly short game that is fun to play and that I'm proud of. My main source of inspiration for this game will be Elden Ring. They've really got a winning combat formula involving carefully timed attacks, rolls and stamina management, which I'll be drawing a lot from. In terms of art style, I want the game to be cute but also creepy. Over the Garden Wall is a perfect example of the vibe I'm going for. And in terms of animation, I'll be drawing some inspiration from Rayman, whereby the arms and feet aren't attached to the body. Uh, they just sort of flow, and this will save a lot of time in animating those pesky limbs. So let's jump into what I managed to get done in my first month of developing in my free time. I wanted to get some art done first, and as I'm not particularly comfortable with digital art, I decided to draw a sprite sheet with pencil and paper. I took pictures of the sheet and cleaned them up in paint.net, which is some great free software. Next, I coloured them in and exported each sprite individually. At this point, I was planning on using Game Maker Studio 2, as it was the engine I had been using most recently. However, I found that Game Maker is primarily designed around using sprite sheet animation, where you have each frame of your animation exported as a separate image, which when displayed in sequence, gives the illusion of movement. I wanted to use a different approach, interpolated animation, where you set the position and rotation of parts of my character at different times, and then the computer takes some of the heavy lifting by calculating the position and rotation of all the frames in between. This is probably possible in Game Maker, but I couldn't work it out, so instead I thought I'd create the animations in After Effects, a program I'm fairly comfortable with, export them as a sequence of images, and then import them to Game Maker. And this worked okay, I was able to get walking animations set up in four directions, which I was fairly happy with. But then I encountered a bit of a roadblock. I knew I wanted the player to be able to customise the character by choosing an animal to play as. If we have four characters in four directions, that means every animation needs to be exported 16 times. I also knew that I wanted different equipable weapons and items, which meant another 16 exports per weapon item combination. And if I wanted to tweak something, I'd have to export everything again. I thought about exporting the heads and weapons as separate layers, but even that would require a lot of work and gets complicated when you realise the order of layers would need to change depending on whether the sword was in front or behind of the player. It became clear that After Effects and Game Maker weren't the right combination of programmes for me, as I wanted to use interpolated animation to save time, not melt my brain into soup. With my motivation in tatters, I took a couple of weeks off to research alternatives. There had to be a better way. If only there was a game engine with powerful After Effects-like animation tools, which would allow me to swap heads and weapons on the same animation easily, and tweak animations on the fly without having to re-export a single image, 
a game engine that is powerful and intuitive, and best of all, completely free, no strings attached. I decided to give Godot a go. I fired it up and got a little mousey guy sliding around and colliding with things. I organised my sprites into a structure of nodes, which are Godot's building blocks, and would allow me to easily change which sprites are displayed based on which weapon the player has equipped and what direction they're facing. After only working on this game for a couple of evenings, I had a completely free day put aside and put my first proper full day of development in. I worked on recreating what I'd already done in After Effects, and pretty soon I had my walk animations done in four directions. I set up an animation tree which plays the walk animation while the player is moving, and set up a blend space to display the correct animations depending on the direction of movement. And pretty soon I had my character moving and animating in four directions, which felt great. It's really satisfying to see and control a character that you've drawn come to life on the screen. Next I decided to recolor my sprites, as they looked a little bland to me. I found a cute colour palette by Conker on low spec that I liked. I did one more darker shade for my outlines and got to work recolouring my sprites. I created and added a few more objects to my test level just to spice it up a bit and I think it's looking pretty good. I added some edge colliders to stop you escaping off the screen and added custom controls so player 1 could use WASD and player 2 could use the arrow keys. I implemented a second instance of my player which uses different controls, which was all very straightforward in Godot, and boom, we officially have a cooperative game. I added the four different heads I'd drawn, and now player one and player two could be different characters. And I was really thrilled with the progress I'd made that day. Here's a little before and after. The next day I started working on my player state machine, which basically allows you to run different sections of code depending on what your character is doing. For example, while the player is idle, I'll allow the player to start moving, but not allow the player to move while attacking. I started working on the attack animations. I had a separate one for the anticipation, which is when they're drawing the sword back, the strike, and the recovery, which is when they bring their sword back to idle, as I wanted different states for each of these movements. This is so I could do different things in the different states. For example, after the player has struck and is in the recovery state, I wanted the player to be able to press attack again to swing back in the other direction for a combo attack. And after a bit more animating and coding, I had it working. It felt a bit stationary, so I added a small lunge when you strike, which I think really helps add power. Over the next few evenings, I worked on the attack animations for the other directions, and combined the anticipation, strike and recovery animations into one. As although they're different states, there's no good reason to have them as separate animations, and this helped speed things up a bit. And we have attack combos working in all four directions. I should probably mention that while I am making a cooperative game, the first playable prototype I am working towards will be a player versus player deathmatch, as this will allow me to thoroughly test combat without having to worry about making any enemies, and it's important to get the combat down as that is what you'll be doing for most of the game. With that said, the next thing I added were hitboxes and hurtboxes. These are colliders which will allow me to detect when a hurtbox on a sword makes contact with a hitbox on a player. And after trying and failing to get this working for quite some time, I realised that the sword moves so fast during a strike that between frames it can skip right over a hitbox and so never triggers the collision. I could have done something fancy and worked out the shape between the hurt box on a given frame and the frame before it, but I thought it was best to keep things simple, and I have a capsule shaped collider which rotates to the direction of attack, and it's made active during the strike. After setting up layers to ensure hitboxes only collide with hurtboxes, and a simple check in the hurtbox code to make sure a player cannot damage themselves, I had hit detection working exactly how I wanted it to. And that's everything I achieved in my first month of development. It may not look like much, but I'm super proud of it and I'm excited to see what I can get up to next month.